Hello, welcome to the Sunday Gardener. And today it's late autumn, almost winter, just coming up to December, and we're looking at overwintering tender plants. These are pelagoniums, we commonly know them as geranium, and they've been bedding plants, they've been out for the summer. They're still flowering, which is a part to do with our very, very mild autumn. And I want to keep them for next year because plants are very expensive and now more than ever we need to find ways to garden which are uh, cheaper but also recycle and reuse. So previously I've kept these pelagoniums in a conservatory, an unheated conservatory which is ideal. So if you want to overwinter tender bedding plants like pelagoniums, like fuchsias, you need to put them in a frost-free environment. A frost-free environment may be ideally a conservatory because there's lots of light, a greenhouse. I haven't got either now so I'm going to have to use this lean-to. It's not ideal and they may or may not come through the winter but we'll, we'll experiment. But certainly if you can put them into a greenhouse or a, a cold frame that's ideal. What you need to do is to keep them dry, that's very important. You need good air circulation and you need to keep them frost free and all three of those are equally important. Lots of people think that it's the frost that kills tender plants when you're overwintering them but just as likely is dampness causing powdery mildew and mould and that's aggravated by poor air circulation. So we're going to put them in here so one of the things is don't pack them in. The more you put in here the less air circulates the more likely you are. So you're going to have to pick and choose your favourites and just keep those. Do not water them very much over the winter, very, very, very sparingly. And although it's tempting to zip this up and to shut the doors and keep the warmth in, I want to show you, this is, I've deliberately had this closed up for a few days and I want to show you what's happened so you can see the problem. So we're just gonna zoom in and look at the close up on this, lean, this, this plastic lean-to. Absolutely full of water and that is condensation. So I've had just a few plants in there for a couple of days, zipped it up, and that's caused all of this condensation. So the most important thing is you must let the air in, so don't zip it up unless there is going to be a frost. Don't close the greenhouse doors, keep everywhere ventilated. Unless it's actually going to snow or be really frosty, keep the doors open, keep the front of it open, because if you get a lot of damp and condensation in there, the plants will die. The other thing is they don't need all this growth. You need to cut them right down so there isn't too much leaf on them and no flowers and water them really sparingly. So hopefully you've got a good before and after shot and you can see how hard these have been cut back for storage over the winter. This will allow them to be kept dry, keep the growth down to the absolute minimum, plenty of air circulation. The truth is how well your pelagoniums or other tender plants survive the winter will depend on how and what you've got to put them into and to some extent where you are in the country gardening. If you're in an area that has high levels of rainfall, very damp air, it's going to be a bit more difficult because you're going to be more prone to getting mould. Alternatively, if you're in a dry area, then you have a better chance of the plants surviving the winter. If you've a big airy greenhouse, that's better than a modest structure like this, where obviously it's going to be less air circulation and more prone to damp. Keep them in the pots, not in the full container, because that will add an extra layer which will trap the air and prevent the air circulation. So they all need to come out of the containers as well. Now I just want to show you one other plant which is showing early signs of mould. I've stored it in that way so that I can demonstrate what the mould looks like. If you get a plant that starts to look like this, you need to take it out of the greenhouse. These leaves are affected by mould because they've been kept, the plant's been kept in damp conditions and you can see that they've gone all brown and pretty unpleasant. It's really important that these are removed from the plant. And then, so I'm going to cut this one back as I have the others and that will remove also some of the other mould leaves that are there. And I'm going to cut this one back really hard because of the presence of mould on it and clear off any diseased leaves. Picking. Now I'm not going to put this one 
in here because I can't be sure at this moment whether I've cut and cleared the mould off it. So this one's going to have to take its chance outside for a little while. Hopefully, I don't think we're going to get any frost quite yet. It's, it's just coming into December and I'll keep my eye on it. And if in a few weeks time it looks like it's not showing any signs of mould, then I'll put it in here for the more severe part of the winter. If you've nowhere else to overwinter your pelargoniums, you can try putting them under a cloche. Uh, as long as you cut them back, don't water them very much, and keep the ends of the cloche open so that the air circulates free. After all, what have you got to lose? These plants will come back next year, you'll have pelargoniums for free. If they die over the winter, it's no great loss, but it's always worth a try, and that way you can have free plants in the spring.